Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we are at Host Milano 2023. Host is a coffee expo that happens every other year and is the biggest one that happens in all of Europe. I'll bring you around with me to take a look at some of the most exciting new equipment drops that have occurred this year. This is a place that a lot of times equipment companies choose to release or unveil their newest products. So sit back and enjoy. Hey, we're at the Mazda booth here at Host 2023 with their newly unveiled Phylos grinder. This is a 64 millimeter single dosing grinder. Now obviously right off the bat, you're gonna notice a pretty striking resemblance to its older brother, the ZM, but in a much more compact form. And that's because it's a 64 millimeter grinder with a 400 watt synchronous AC motor, more than enough power and torque to rip through those beans. What's really interesting is when we get to the inside, but before that, I'm sure one of the first things you've noticed is where the dial is. The dial is on the back as opposed to the front, which is going to be a questionable call for a lot of you, which I'm, I'm sure of. Here is whenever you're standing in front of the grinder, whether as a home barista or on bar, you're able to just reach back and with both hands have full control over the dial situation. Now, why did they put it on the back? You might be asking, this is an oversight or a last minute addition. The idea is actually for the entry to the middle. Now here you have a very innovative way of getting into the machine. You have the panel right here, which to me looks a little bit like a back panel with the branding right there. At first when I saw it, I had to ask which way was front, which way was back, because on the back you have the dial with a little knob in the center. It is reminiscent of other grinders, but this one is taking a completely different approach by putting a panel right here. You simply pop this off and you have easy access to the burrs. So with this system in place, it would be hard, near impossible to put a dial, uh, dial system up front. So the way that we get into the birds themselves is simply by loosening these thumb screws and just opening it right on up. So there we have the inside of the bird chamber for easy access to cleaning without using any tools. Just two thumb screws and you're right inside. Now you might be looking at this bird geometry and wondering what birds these are. These are actually just like all the other Mazda birds made in house. And it's a big, a big change from their usual approach to burr making. It seems like most of their other burrs have been optimized for more traditional styles of coffee, but this one, they went into a different direction. As you can see, the geometry is somewhat similar to that of the SSP multi-purpose burr. But what I can immediately tell is the grooves right here are much deeper than on the SSP, which is allowing for a faster and more aggressive pre-breaking system. That may not be the idea that is on their mind, but uh, for the most part, that is going to be taking in beans at a lot faster rate than something like the SSP. There is something different here that most other grinders don't have, an auger that acts as a pre-breaker. Now this one's really unique in that it doesn't, it doesn't go all the way around the auger, it only goes about halfway, which really slows down the feeding from the hopper into the burrs themselves. What this is allowing is for a more meated feeding into the burrs to give a more consistent throughput. We look at these and it definitely screams to us something that's more consistent for light roasted coffees. Of course, I've not really gotten to try these as far as uh, in a way that I would prefer in order to comment on them. So we'll leave that for a later video. But for now, I think that's a nice step forward uh, for the Mazda burr grinding uh, team. And the inside, they have a simple bearing here that's uh, encased in a, in, in a piece of rubber so that it spins as perpendicularly as possible. Now, before I put the cover back on, it's important to kind of note that right here, there's a little tool that helps with any type of retention inside. You put this tool into the chute itself, you spin it a couple times back and forth. Then when you pull out, a little bit of coffee might be stuck in here and you can toss it into your dosing cup in, in case you're going for the zero retention. Granted, a lot of what's left over is gonna be fines and chaff, so you could be like me and just get rid of it. Underneath here, we also have something like a thwacker in order to get any excess grounds out. It's just a little plastic piece that you pull that has that's spring actuated. So you pull and it beats against the, uh, the, the exit chute. What they've done here is they've used magnets in order to kind of ground the cup so that it lessens static. And as you see in this, uh, in this footage, there is very little uh, static that goes on. Of course, this might change depending on your environment. If you're in a really dry area, I can't speak to that again. I'm only going with my experience here on the show floor. Now, a lot of you may be asking if this has the kind of the new feature of variable RPM. It does not, it is at a set 1400. So that's the Mazda Phylos, and uh, there'll be more on this soon. 
Now, while walking through all of these aisles, looking at all this coffee equipment, I can't help but be thankful for my own online presence, which is constantly showcasing what I have to offer, which I have powered through Squarespace. If you're unfamiliar, Squarespace is an incredible place online where you can launch your own website, you can build an online store, you can create online community, you can do a whole lot of things with the click of a mouse. They have a fluid engine, which makes dragging and dropping to create your website design very easy. They have an incredibly intuitive online store where you can control everything just right there. And they have this fantastic ability to communicate with your fans or with your customers. If you're someone who's an entrepreneur or has a hobby on the side or just wants to sell some of the things that you've been working on, check out Squarespace to build your website today. It's something I've been using for the past eight years and is something that I really enjoy because how simple it makes the whole process. You can get a 10% discount using the code www.squarespace.com slash Lance Hedrick, which is in the caption below. Click that and start your Squarespace journey today. We're at the Himro booth at Host 2023, and we're with the EK43 Omnia. Now, Omnia comes from the word, obviously meaning all, and it's because they wanted to hit everything, every workflow with this grinder. Now, the EK43 is a cherished, beloved icon in the industry, so they wanted to maintain the shape while making some functional and inside internal changes. So first, we take a look at this knob. It's the same feel as the original EK, but now it's digitized with a screen. When we turn, and this is in classic mode, it's just like turning a dial on the normal EK, but it's incredibly granular and it shows us in microns what the movement is and it's because they're measuring the movement electronically between the burrs themselves. Now what I wish is that they were they had a little bit more of a streamlined way of discussing microns. It can be a little confusing when you have the bentwood on the market which gives you a hypothetical particle peak on the distribution. That's probably not really where it's at because everyone kind of calibrates theirs differently, but that is one language on the market. You have others who talk about burr gap, like the Commandante, and now you have this, which is talking about burr movement, which is more accurate, but in reality, the fact that it goes down to zero shows that it's not in, re in reality because you're not gonna get zero microns between the burrs. There's no such thing as perfect parallelism. So the number here is not referring to the peak particle size, but instead, the distance between the burrs. When we scroll up, we go to time mode. As you see here, we're currently at 470. It automatically moves to 200. And this is a preset. This is something you would preset. So let's say we wanted a one second grind. We're currently at 300 or at 200. We're moving up to 300. Again, if we move over here, we're currently at 300. It's gonna move automatically down to 200. Now, some of you may be asking, well, what if a baby barista comes on, they're on bar and they try to move it while that's happening? Well, nothing's really gonna happen because right when you start moving it, and, if, and once it starts moving robotically, it's very hard to stop. And so you're gonna get immediate feedback which is gonna stop you from doing it. After that though, it doesn't matter if you move it while it's in the robotic mode. So there's no real worries because it's gonna give you immediate feedback and anyone's gonna pull their hand once they start feeling that intense pressure. It's not just a slight movement, it's pretty strong in how it moves. Then we go one more down and it's library mode. Here's where you can store 10 different recipes so we can keep adding, Grammage note and keep adding, keep adding, yada, yada, yada. So there are three, these three different modes on the grinder to however your bar flow is set up. Big important feature that a lot of people are worried about is the internals. So we're gonna go ahead and on this one we have it opened up. So immediately you're gonna see something that's very nice which is just one screw that opens up the front of the grinder. Much easier to access the burr. And in fact, you can just take the burr right out. So immediately what we notice is there is no more key. That key on the original EK was not great. It had a lot of flex to it and did not allow for very repeatable alignment. So on this one, they've removed it and instead in order to have, to have grip, to have that traction, in order to spin the auger, there's this little bitty nub right here. This, this, uh, there's one on each side and it holds on inside of the auger itself. There are two little slots that hold onto it so there's only one way to put the burr on. You just twist it till you find it. Now it can spin. But that's not even the most exciting part of what they have done. What I'm excited about personally is they have added a bearing to the front part of the axle. So in the standard EK43, if you open it up, there is no bearing right here. And that is a big failure in my opinion. They have the bearing behind the burr set and at the back of the motor, but they don't have one here, which can disallow nice alignment. The front of this is kind of free to move however it goes. Whenever you put beans in, whenever you take the front off, put it back on, you always have to consistently align it. In this setup, however, they have optimized the potential for alignment. On top of all of this, they actually check alignment before it leaves the factory with a dial indicator to ensure that their quality control is kind of making up for the past and a lot of the accusations of misalignment, which I have also made.
they have changed back to using cast burrs. It's gonna be an option when you buy it to use cast burrs. They stopped doing this back in 2015 because they had repeatability issues. But over the past few years, they have discovered a way to repeat the casting process without warping and without the type of failure they were experiencing earlier. And this has happened over just the past few years, actually. When I discussed with them not too long ago, they were still having issues, but they found a way of controlling the temperature in order to disallow the warping from happening. They found the culprit, they fixed it, now they have repeatability even with their cast burrs, allowing that goodness that we all remember from 2015 to come back to modern day. When we look at the grinder all together, we still have the same system of flicking and it's much nicer and a lot less loud and annoying than the original, but it still does the same thing. There's still a little retention, but what they've done to help with the static is they've added this little tube, which is, has an ionic charge and this uh, disallows some of that static that builds up. It's not perfect though, and it still allows some static buildup, but I don't know the extent of it as I've not been able to test it in its entirety yet. Instead of the plastic little tray, they now have a magnetic plate, which is really nice because you can just bada bing, bada boom. What about gravimetrics? Well, what they've done instead is they have a, a separate hopper you can get, which inside there are these little rollers. And as you can see, it electronically connects to the brain of the EK43. And you can kind of calibrate, depending on the beans, the amount of rolls it needs in order to dispense the right amount of grams into your portafilter. What they're working on right now is a portafilter holder. Obviously not everyone needs one, so they have a cover for it that's magnetic, but they have a huge magnet right here. And so you have a port, this is a prototype of their portafilter holder that can double as a V60 holder if you flip it upside down. So essentially what you do is you put it on, it doesn't magnetize until you flip the switch. Anyway, that's the end of the EK43. Hope you enjoy. We are here at the Tone booth at Post Milan 2023 checking out their brand new boilerless espresso machine. It's the first ever two group machine without a boiler. Now you might be asking, how the heck are you doing that? Well, they have essentially ferro-like technology, which is like a coiled up heating element that brings water through thin membranes in order to heat it up rapidly. So they have one for the steam wand, one for the group, one for this group, one for this group. So what that means is they aren't heating up water when you turn it on. It heats up water when it's needed. So when I start a shot of espresso, it takes a second, heats the water up as it's extracting. That way, as it sits idle by, it's not really pulling any energy. In fact, over an hour, it might be five watts, whereas a typical espresso machine with massive boilers would be idle at 550 watts an hour. This is an absolutely sustainable response to a lot of this energy crisis going on and is probably a step in the right direction, in my opinion. So as you can see, there is no boiler here. Instead, I have an area where I don't have to fear for my ears burning off because it doesn't stay hot. It only heats on demand. Just a couple of seconds and you've got your silky espresso flowing or your milky steaming. You have the potential for flow control because they're using flow meters inside and part of that is actually helping them with the temperature. On top of that, they have pressure sensors in there. So with right now with each of these buttons, they have them set at a different set flow and a different set pressure because of their flow meter and pressure sensors. So this one just for instance is set at eight grams per second with a top OPV of nine bar using a membrane pump inside. This one is at about five grams per second with a top pressure of around seven and a half bar and so on. So each of these are set at different flow rates and different pressures to exact different results. Now in the future with their app that controls all of their machines, including their automatic drip, including their cold brew and different things like that, you'll be able to control the different variables in the extraction process, including flow rate, including pressure, including different steps. But right now with this prototype, they have these different buttons set. Now the fourth button is really interesting. They're actually pulling cold espresso with this, which I'll demonstrate in a second. With about 37 degree water, your body temperature, they are pulling cold shots of espresso. And they're saying that the dial is similar to that when it is hot. So you don't have to change your dial in in order to enact this type of espresso. Now over here, we have a hot water button and a steam button. So that the steam one and hot water, both run off of the Pharos, are able to be enacted with just a simple touch of a button. So that the whole front panel is very sleek and extremely minimal in design. This one is volumetrically controlled with that pre-programmed dose. So this one stopped on its own at 37 seconds with an exact output. So let's give it a taste. Cold espresso. So because it's 37 degrees, it's not actually cold. It's more like slightly warm, but it tastes pretty good. It's very acidic actually. 
better than I thought it was gonna be. Boilerless technology, that is hopefully something that will catch on in the industry as heating up boilers takes up a ton of energy. Anyway, keep your eye on this. It's still in the prototype phase, but they have a lot of exciting things to come, including potentially a single group one for the home or for small cafes, as well as maybe three or four group ones and a lot of other expansions that they're looking forward to. But for now, I'm excited about the trajectory, so keep your eyes peeled. We're at the booth with Maro. Maro is a new espresso machine, a smart espresso machine that is trying to do things a little bit differently. The whole idea behind this is to create an experience for the user where they can grow with their machine. And on top of that, they wanted to just provide something a little bit different than what's on the market. Now there are aspects of this that are seen in other places on the market, but they've introduced a way, a smart profiler they call it, which is a communication between the machine and the person and the machine and the coffee to where it can kind of self-diagnose and fix the shot going. The sides of the machine might look a little plasticky if you're looking at it online, but it's actually made of a material that is used in luxury bathrooms. It's actually really resistant to heat and to any type of embellishment that can incur on the outside. The top, whereas it might look a little like rubber, is actually an anodized aluminum, two kilos of anodized aluminum. So it's very heavy duty. And this whole front screen is made of glass. So right here you have the intersection of this high quality luxury bathroom material. You have the anodized aluminum and you have glass. Okay, so this outside is incredibly easy to clean. They actually did a really unique experiment where they put espresso onto it, they let it dry in the sun, and they set it in a dark room for four weeks. And their test was if it could wipe off easily with just a little soap and if it left no smell, and it passed that test. So it's a really unique, uh, really unique decision for the outside that's gonna make, uh, make sure it looks clean and it stays clean. We're on the second of their three modes. They have three different modes that you can start off with, which include the explorer mode, which is like a beginner mode. They have the expert mode, which is what we're on and then they have one they're currently working on that will be similar to that of the decent espresso machine where you have the capability of setting your different uh, pre-infusion stages your infusion stages you can have the the exit stage if you hit a certain pressure or a certain flow rate so you, you'll have that capability in the final version but right now they just have two of those three modes ready this one like i said is the expert mode uh, right here they give you three options for pre-infusion these are different fill rates one would be eight milliliters per second two is five milliliters a second, three is three milliliters per second. So if we do three, that's gonna give us the slow one and we can do something similar to like a Slayer espresso fill. Five would be similar to like an Olka pump, eight would be something like a rotary pump. Then of course you can choose the pressure at which you're wanting it to pull. So we'll just say nine. And then over here, this is the smart profiler. You can choose the amount you want, the volume you want in the amount of time. And regardless of your grind size, it will fix the brew prep pressure slash flow rate in order to achieve your amount in the amount of time. So if that means it only needs to hit two bar of pressure to make sure it takes 27 seconds to hit your volume it will do that automatically and at the end it can actually give you a, a suggestion as to whether you need to go finer or coarser in order to fix so that you hit your nine bar of pressure in the time and volume allotted over here of course we can change the temperature and we can change our dose in so that we can kind of save the profile you have history here where you can go back and look at your different shots but then we go back to settings we go to explorer mode and re-enter the brew here, what is really cool is they have different standard drinks, let's say a flat white. It's gonna tell you everything you need. You need milk, you need your cups, you need your, a small milk pitcher, and the exact cup you need. This is a double shot of espresso, the cup you need. Go next, extract the double shot into the cup. So you go back to this kind of thing. We have the dose, we have our ratio that we're wanting, and it has, again, this smart shot profiler, and it will give you the, the advice at the end if you need to go finer or coarser, or you can just use what comes out. So it's gonna do the exact amount of milliliters in the exact amount of time, and it will just change and fix the pressure in order to achieve that, regardless of your grind size. Then you swipe to start, and it's gonna start here. So they've, they've simplified what the graph is gonna look like when they use this kind of beginner mode, so that it can, it's very easy on the eyes for people who are watching it. So we'll do a manual stop, so it starts steaming automatically because that's the next part of the process for a flat white. So you swipe the start, that was purging out the water. So it goes, the steam is on high, and you can press to stop. There you go. But you also have different capabilities of starting the steam on from over here or uh, starting the hot water from over here, changes here. Um, going back to the brute. So one of their big ideas with this is they wanted to ensure that everything could be found without having to scroll through a thousand pages. So you have these six, six options here, which is hot water, which is steam wand, but you could also just double click and it'll start all of these. Double click to start the hot water. If you want to start brewing, 
you can double click here and it'll start brewing automatically whatever you have it set on. So all of them, it was all made to make sure it's as intuitive and fast as possible with workflow in mind. So the company was founded a few years ago around COVID time between two 19 year olds named Max and Robin. So they named it Morrow after the first syllable of the, the two names. And they were 19 at the time, incredibly young, and they were trying to find suppliers for everything. And of course, during COVID, they weren't really able to supply from outside of Germany. So they went to make really good contacts there. It was difficult to get people to take them seriously because of their youth, but they kept persevering. And now they source essentially all of their parts out of Germany and they build it all in Germany. So the expected retail price of this machine will be 4,500 euros. And they expect to use distributors whenever it does come out. This is what they have in a working prototype. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what we have going on. This is Maro, I'll put a link to their website down below in the caption. Let's move on to the next product. So we're at the ACS booth right now, which he has unveiled a new machine, which is a prototype. But before we get to that, I want to show you really quickly a cool feature that he's added to the Bostic. Since my past video on the Bostic was a prototype, it did not have this feature, but it's really neat. It's a safety system. So as you notice, there's no port filter in here. So there's no pressure giving back. Normally, if you pull down like that and you let go, it flops up really quickly. But right now, he has a safety system in place. So we let water come out and then we go up and look. It makes it a lot safer, obviously. No more chins being busted up. So let's move on to the brand new Falcon 1. This is a brand new E61 machine from ACS, which includes a lot of really neat features that I'm actually really excited to talk about. As I explained in my past E61 torn down video, in a typical E61, you have a full thermosiphon loop, which is what is actively heating up that group head by bringing in hot water and then cycling through the group and back out. And it's a full thermosiphon loop. With this one, he took a stock E61 group head and only used one of those holes that are pre-built in for the input of hot water. The second one he's used for a heating cartridge so that you can control via PID the temperature of the group head. So this hunk of brass that is typically really difficult to uh, you know, have any sort of control over the temperature, you're now able to control it with this cartridge through the menu on the side of the machine. Another thing that he'll be introducing is two different options of machines. One with the typical E61 lever that will enact and cease the shot but then one that has an automatic start function. So as you see here, there is no lever. Instead, you can start the shot right there. And there we go, automatic start and stop. He's also going to be adding a pressure controlling knob. He has not decided yet where to put it on the machine, but it will be controlling the rotary pump in order to give you pressure control, just like the flow control knob would give you, but it's actually controlling the pump itself. So you'll be able to mark your pressure using the back pressure readout on the manometer that's built into the group head, and you'll be able to have easy control over that with this knob that he'll be adding on. Again, this is a prototype, so not everything is uh, finished, but you'll be able to control the PID in the steam boiler, the brew boiler, and the cartridge in the group head, as well as get that pressure control with the knob that will be coming on. Now, the final price is not set, but it seems to be set around uh, or, or below $2,000. It's essentially a stripped down Vostic with the same boiler as a Vostic, uh, just with an E61 group. By measuring the sinusoidal waves of the voltage, you are able to control the amount of heating that is going on. So as opposed to relying on the on and off of the, the heating element based off of a P-stat or something along those lines, you are able to save a lot of energy by utilizing this type of uh, system. And it's a system I've actually never heard of before. It might be completely original to this machine, which is really neat, but it comes cuts down on energy consumption by up to 50%. So that is something that is a big downside of E61s is the amount of energy that is consumed to maintain temperature, especially once it rises to temperature, to maintain temperature. That is it for Host 2023. I hope you enjoyed all the different equipment we looked at today. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. But don't forget, hit the like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. That really helps the channel. But until next time, I hope that you brew something tasty today. And cheers.